Dysonolum is a series of three-dimensional graphic scores that are presented here as a sort of living installation. Every day a different performer comes into the space and spends some time interpreting the scores and um, everything they do uh, is recorded by the room and then put through a, uh, a long-term degenerative audio process that very slowly and gradually decays their, their sound. This project started as an attempt to try and understand the concept of infrathin. Um, it's a term that was originally coined by Marcel Duchamp. And it's actually a really tricky concept to define, which is the smallest possible separation between two moments or events and what, what, it, what happens when you linger in that moment and you exist right there um, in that point of separation. Um, I'm fascinated by the concept of a decaying memory um, and the imprint that a person makes on a space when they move through it or the lingering sound after they've, they've, they've performed or they've had a conversation. You know, here you're looking at like a dimensional square that's not moving, however, the more you look at it, you see the movement in it. It's, it looks static, but it's not, because the different shapes create a rhythm of their own. And so when it becomes smaller and, and when it becomes smaller and larger in space, then it creates this kind of like push-pull kind of thing like that that you have to interpret. In general, I'm really interested in alternate methods of notation that sort of push performers to reconsider their role within a space. So for example, what would music sound like if we could dive into the score itself and actually walk behind the notes on a page? What happens when you give interpreters the challenge or the invitation to explore the other side of a sound or the other side of a gesture, you know? Um, so by creating this, this three-dimensional score, what I was hoping to be able to do was give them that moment of being able to quite literally walk around to the other side and see what it looks like and to venture between the markings on the score and read the open space and read the dimension and the depth and turn that into some sort of sound. Sarah contacted me uh, as I've been coming down here about playing on this installation and um, it was a really fascinating idea and we had a nice conversation about uh, you know a, a mutual mentor of ours Wood Otto Leo Smith and his system of creating notational systems that uh, are not just open to interpretation but also open to reinterpretation and reevaluation. Performance happens in the space. While it's happening, we record everything that they do. Every sound, even if it's audience, even if it's clapping, even if it's talking. Everything that happens in the space. And we play it back through an array of speakers. Each performer gets their own speaker. The program analyzes the harmonic content of what they're playing as a whole and says, these are the frequency bands that are most significant to least significant. And with each repetition, we lose more and more of the insignificant material. Mm -hmm. So by the end of the process, the only things that are really left are those notes, really, that were more present than others in the rest of the performance. So, so cool. after four or five days, all you really hear is this kind of like whispering of those particular notes as a chord. It's curious that you uh, kind of immediately develop a relationship with the symbols. So I decided I would sort of commit to that first impression uh, and latched on to these circular figures. I mean, there has a lot to do with circles and lines, but uh, some of the circles are empty and other ones are full. And that instead of thinking of that in terms of like, you know, ordinarily maybe long and short notes, it seemed to me with the transparency to maybe suggest fullness and emptiness in the sound. But then, of course, as you start to move around the space, uh, all that changes, and one shape will lead you into another shape. And 
you know, as I'm hearing feedback and different things, sounds bouncing off of the the uh, installation in different ways. Uh, it, the installation itself almost became like a reflector or, or like a mute type object. Um, and, uh, you know, it's interesting that something that seems so fixed could also be so organic and movable. So it's nice for this installation in the sense that it, uh, you have to come back. Yeah. You have to come yeah. back. And also what's quite, what's, what's quite gorgeous about it is that it is completely dependent then on how long each performer plays. Exactly. Because the removal of these frequencies occurs after each repetition. So the more, so, you, yeah, so the more you give to the space, the longer your presence exists in the space, <laughs> so to speak. Infrathin is all in this. It's just like layered in in so yeah. many ways. It, you know, that it's an invitation for people to come, which is very different than a score you know, telling them what to do or how to play or instructions. It's an invitation to enter the space and to enter these 3D uh, wondrous objects. <laughs> yeah.